What I want to do in this video is to give you the gist of what the Roth, the Roth IRA is all about. And just to get an idea of why it's called the Roth IRA, it's named after William Roth, the late senator from Delaware. He helped, I guess you could say, shepherd this legislation in 1997 when it was first passed. So they named the IRA after him, William William. Roth from Delaware. So that's where the word comes from. So it's a special type of individual retirement account. So why did they go to the trouble of creating a new one? So let's think about what a traditional IRA does. And then I'll talk about why a Roth IRA could be interesting, or it's a little bit different, or why it could be beneficial. And then we'll actually see it in an example. So the first question is, what happens when you put money into a traditional or a Roth IRA. In the traditional IRA video, you saw that it is tax deferred. Tax deferred. That if you were to put $5,000 in your traditional IRA, you are not taxed on that money. In the Roth IRA, it is not deferred. It is not deferred. So you would actually pay taxes on that $5,000. So immediately you're saying, hey, gee, you know, this doesn't seem like that great of a thing. Why would I ever use it? I have to pay taxes on the money I put in. And this is the interesting thing. In both situations, as long as your investments stay in the either traditional or Roth accounts, earnings, earnings, earnings are not taxed, are not taxed while in account. This is true for both of them. This is true for both of them. But you're still going to say, hey, Sal, the traditional still looks a lot better. I had to pay taxes on the Roth right from the get-go. I didn't have to pay it on the traditional. And then they can both grow, and I can buy and sell my stocks, or I invest in mutual funds, or whatever I do inside of them. I don't pay taxes. The traditional still looks better. Now, the interesting thing is what happens when you withdraw the money. So there's a lot of special circumstances on when uh, a withdrawal is qualified or not. I'm not going to go into all the details. I really just want to give you the essence of why the Roth is interesting. So let's say you're over 59 and a half years old, 59 and a half years old, and in the Roth, your money's been there for more than five years. It's been seasoned. I'm not going to go into all of the particulars. So in the traditional IRA, when you withdraw, so let's say we're older, older than older than 59 and a half for both and then we do a withdrawal with withdrawal in the traditional IRA you have to pay taxes you pay taxes you're taxed ordinary income tax ordinary income tax income tax while in the Roth IRA no taxes not taxed not taxed. And we saw in the traditional IRA video that this tends to be pretty good. When you're older than 59 and a half, you might be retired. You might be in a lower tax bracket, so you're going to pay lower taxes on it. And it's been deferred for however many years your IRA has been in existence. Now, this is especially interesting because over here, you paid tax just on the original amount that you put in. And then you allow that original amount to grow over many, 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 many years. And then all of a sudden, you're not taxed at all. So that all of a sudden becomes a little bit interesting. This seems like a pretty good thing to have. And we're going to actually play with the numbers to see how they work out. Now the other interesting thing about the Roth is if you early withdrawal, early withdrawal, early withdrawal, for a traditional IRA, you pay 10%, 10% penalty on the withdrawal, plus you get taxed, plus taxes. On the Roth IRA, if you're just taking the original amount you put in, and I'll do this with a numerical example, if you're just taking out your principal amount, no taxes or penalty on the principal. No taxes or penalty penalty on principal. On principal, I've spelled that badly, Prince, principal. 
And you would only have to pay, even if it's a non-qualified withdrawal, and there's all these special circumstances of what's qualified, and, and I'm not going to go into the details. You would only have to pay the 10% penalty, 10% penalty, and taxes on earnings, and taxes on earnings. And one of the main reasons why I'm not going into all the details is one, it would make the video a little confusing. But also, the government is constantly changing the details. So I want this, I want you to be able to watch this video as many years in the future and not to be dated. So I don't want to go into all of the different things that the government is changing from year to year. But let's just do a very basic example just to get the sense of things. So let's look at a traditional IRA. Traditional. And then we have a Roth. Let me write IRA just to be clear that we're talking about an IRA in both circumstances. So let's say my original income amount, let's say I made more than $5,000. I'll just use $5,000 as my example. And I also make another note. Roth IRA is subject to more limitations in terms of your total overall income. And that's also changing, so I don't want to be specific on the numbers. You could look that up. But there are ways that you can transfer traditional IRAs into Roth IRAs. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a loophole on being able to get around some of those restrictions. But anyway, I won't go into the details just yet. But just remember, Roth IRA, there are some more limitations on whether or not you can put things into it. But if you're tricky, you might be able to get around them. So let's say you have $5,000. And just so you know, the limits on IRAs, they apply to Roth or traditional or any combination of the two. So if you, you're starting with $5,000, so in the traditional IRA, you have zero taxes initially. In your Roth IRA, initially, let's say you have a 32% tax bracket, just like in the previous video, 32% tax bracket then you'll pay 32% on 15 on sorry on $5000 32% on $5000 that's 0.32 times $5000 that's $1600 so you're going to pay you're going to pay $1600 in taxes so your amount in the account so in your account your principal principal in your traditional IRA, maybe I should write it out here. Starting with that $5,000, your principal principal is going to be $5,000 here. And it's going to only be you have to pay you have to take 1600 out for taxes, so it's only going to be 30 30 3400 3400 right there. Now let's say in e either situation, you were to take that, invest it in some stocks, and then five years later, five years later, you were to, it doubles. So let's say at some future point, it doubles and you sell those stocks. So that becomes $10,000 in your account there. And then this, you invest it in stocks, and it doubles. This becomes $7,800. $7,800 in your account right here. So this is 10 years, I think I said five years into the future. I'm just picking that into, into the future. And let's say we're still not 59 and a half years old just yet. Now, we could just continue to leave each, either of these amounts in our account until we're 59 and a half. But let's say we have some type of uh, need. We need, a, uh, we, we, we need to give a loan to our brother-in-law or something. So we really want to have access to this money. So let's look at the situation where we withdraw. If we were to withdraw, if we were to withdraw, well, let's think of a couple of situations. If we were to withdraw $3,400. $3,400. Let's say that's exactly what my brother-in-law needs just right now. So if we were to withdraw $3,400 in the traditional IRA sense, in, in the traditional IRA case, so minus, so we take out $3,400, we're going to have to do two things. First, we're going to have to pay taxes on it. So we're going to have to pay 32% of that, assuming we're still in the same tax bracket. So $3,400 times 0.32 is equal to, we're going to have to pay $1,088 in taxes. So 
we're going to have to pay 1,088 in taxes. And we're also going to have to pay a penalty on this entire amount, on the $3,400. So we're also going to have to pay 10% penalty, $340 penalty. So we're going to be left with, after paying all of this, this is, let me get the calculator out. Let's see, the calculator right there. We're going to be left with 3,400 minus 1088 minus $340 is equal to $1,972. So we're left with $1,972. Now in the Roth IRA, when you needed that money all of a sudden and you decided to withdraw it early, and we're only taking out $3,400. So we're taking out the amount that was our original principal. In the Roth IRA, we get the $3,400, because that was our original amount. And we pay no taxes. So we act or penalties. So at any point in time on the Roth IRA, you can always take your principal out. In the other types of our IRAs, not only will you have to pay taxes on it, you're also going to have to pay a penalty on top of that. So uh, the Roth IRA, one of the very positive things is it gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, let's say you needed to withdraw, I don't know, let's say you needed to withdraw $4,000. Withdraw, this is another scenario. $4,000 at this same point in time. With, in the traditional IRA scenario, once again, you're going to have to pay 32% of that in taxes. So you're going to have to pay 4,000 times 32% in taxes. And you're also going to have to pay plus $400 penalty. penalty. In the Roth IRA case, you pay nothing you get your 34, the original principal you put in, that was your original amount, $3,400. And I, I, in all of this, I'm assuming that we're not 59 and a half years old just yet. So in the Roth situation, you get the $3,400 free and clear, tax and penalty free, but the other $600, the other $600, you're going to have to pay 32% taxes, or whatever your tax bracket is. And then you're also going to have to pay $60, a 10% penalty on just the earnings portion. Remember, $3,400 was your principal. Then if you want to take $4,000 out, the $600 extra, that's stuff that you earned. That's stuff that was grown from the principal. So you're going to have to pay plus another $60 penalty. But it's still a much better situation, if you do the math, than this one here. So in general, if you think, if you're not sure whether you're going to need that money before you retire, the Roth gives you a lot more flexibility. Now, let's go all the way to retirement. Let's go all the way to retirement. Let's say we invest. Let's say we did never withdrew any money. We invest it in another stock, and so we go 10 years later. So we never withdrew any money. We never withdrew any money. We're just going to look at the retirement situation. And we go to our stock, and we sell it, our new stock. We get 20000 there. Here we get $15,600. And of course, in both of these situations, it's great that we're able to buy and sell stocks inside of these retirement accounts and not pay taxes. If these weren't sitting in retirement accounts, every time we bought and sold the stocks, we would have to pay capital gains tax. And you saw that in the previous video. Now, now that we are over, let's say we're 60 years old, we're 60 years old, we can now withdraw our money from either situation. There are some other little stipulations. Your money has to be seasoned, has to be sitting there for five years and all that. I won't go into the details. But let's see what happens when we withdraw the money. Let's say we have a 25% tax bracket now. 25% tax bracket. So we're a retiree. We're earning a little bit less money. We are in a lower tax bracket. In this situation, we're going to pay, when we withdraw it from a traditional IRA, we are going to pay 25% in taxes, which is $5,000 in taxes, and we are going to be left with $15,000 for ourselves to spend in our retirement years. In the Roth IRA situation, once we're over 60 years old, our tax bracket doesn't matter. We just get the money. We just get the money, $15,600 free and clear. 
So if you think about it, in either situation, when we withdrew early, the Roth IRA was much more forgiving, especially if we withdraw less than the amount that we originally put in, $3,400. The Roth IRA does not tax us or give us penalties. It only does that on any money that we earned, any money in excess of the $3,400. The traditional IRA taxes us and penalizes us on everything, on everything. And then even when we go into the future, remember, in the traditional IRA, in the traditional IRA, we didn't pay any taxes to begin with, but we had to pay taxes to end with. So when we pay taxes in the end, we're paying taxes not just on what we put in initially, we're also paying taxes on all of our cumulative earnings, right? We originally put in 5,000, now we're paying taxes on 20,000. So we're going to only end up with $15,000, while in the Roth IRA, we don't pay taxes on anything. For, I guess, in return for being willing to pay our taxes front loaded, to pay them in the beginning, we would never have to pay taxes on that money or on any of the earnings that that money makes. Now, I fixed the numbers here to make them close. Depending on your tax bracket before and after, or how much growth you actually see in your earnings, one may be better than the other. But these are important considerations. And so I just want to let you know the, 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 the pros and cons. The Roth IRA tends to be better in terms of giving you this flexibility and never not worrying to pay taxes at the end. And there's one other thing, and this is you know, depending on how you view life, it might be a minor thing. In the traditional IRA, when you're 70 and a half, they force withdrawal. Force withdrawal. And then, of course, you have to start paying taxes on things. In a Roth IRA, there's no age limit. No age limit. So that's another consideration you might want to take into.